Hey guys, I'm Simran. I'm sure most of us missed the movie all experience, right? But have you ever wondered how a movie is projected on screen? If you look at the back of the hall, you will notice that there is a projector lens, and in that projector lens, the movie is running inverted, and there is a difference between the size of the projector lens and the size of the screen. To answer these. To answer to answer why this happens, we will be making our own projector and understanding the science behind it. Into this DIY is a shoebox. This is going to be the base of your projector. We are going to need a magnifying glass. We are using a magnifying glass because it is a convex lens, so it converges light. In simpler terms, it takes distant light rays and focuses them so we can see better. Uh, convex lenses are also used in binoculars. Apart from that, you are going to need knives, scissors, cutters, whatever you need to cut through the box, and you're going to need tape and glue. Finally, you're going to need a phone or any screen that can fit inside the box. Whatever you use, make sure your brightness is at the highest level, since it's going to be projected on such a huge screen. Out of the box, cut a hole through it. So how it's supposed to be? So I cut a hole through it. Cut one hole at the top. So that the handle could fit inside, failed miserably. That's why it's all taped up. What this is going to do is this is going to let the magnifying glass sit inside to tape it up for stability. Actually, this is what a magnifying glass does. My already small hands. That's what a magnifying glass does. For reference, so I'm just going to stick this up. After I stick this up, let's assume you stuck this up. You're going to stick the your phone to the other end. Such that it is visible through the hole, clearly visible, so it's perfectly aligned. So I've placed my phone upside down in the projector setup, and now I'll test it in the in a dimly lit room. So what we see on the wall right now is high, but it's upside down. But if you look at the phone, the high on the phone is well, it's eye edge. So the phone is upright. So what happens when I flip the phone upside down? When I flip the phone upside down, the letters on the wall they show up correct. That's one. Why this happens in very sim very simply is because of this magnifying glass that I've placed right here. Excuse the disgusting tape, but I cannot rip it off. But you see what happens is when the letters are upside down, on the image it shows up right. When the image is upside down, the letters on the phone. Are upright. Why this happens is what we're going to learn in the next part of the video, which is with the help of a ray diagram. We observed two things: the phone was kept upside down, but image that was formed was erect and upright. The second thing we observed was that there was a difference between the size of the object and the size of the image. This happened both these. The reason for both of these to happen is the way light passes through the convex lens. To understand this better, I'm going to draw a ray diagram. First thing, first thing I'm going to do is draw the axis. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the convex lens. The convex lens in this case is the magnifying glass. I'm going to mark the points of focus. The object I will be drawing upside down since the phone was upside down. Better understanding. I'm going to be drawing that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make one light ray emerge from this point right here. I'm going to pass through the convex lens and through the focus, diverging twice, moving as it moves from a rarer to a denser medium and a denser to a medium. The next thing is I'm going to draw another light ray emerging from the same point, deviating the same way. I'm going to extend that as well. The Point at which these two light rays meet is where our image will form. Now, with this ray diagram, also we can see the same things. One is the object is upside down while the image is upright. Second thing is that the object is much smaller than the image, similar to that of when the screen was projected on the wall. Now, I think. Um, we understand how the technicality of the projector that we made, and I'm going to go back and we're going to look at the projector one last time. So now that I think we understand how a light ray travels, I have something amazing to show you. 
it's so stunning when i look through this hole in the box excuse the ugly tape and excuse the disgusting lens but we see double deviation if this does not prove what we just do i do not know what will sum it up this is the object this is the lens so it passes from air to glass first deviation glass to air second deviation finally the image shows up on the wall boom easy I hope you understood. I hope you had fun watching. I hope you had fun learning. Now you can actually go ahead and set up your own projector and do science behind it. So if you like the video, like, share, like, share, comments. I can't do that. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Bye bye. It was good. Come. Um,